grand opening, grand closing. Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. It's your only friend in the YouTube street, <laughs> Border Rock 77, and I'm back with another video. Let's hit up some of these topics, all right, real quick. But before we get to that, you know, if you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoyed the video. Watch the video, enjoy it. And if you do enjoy this content, you know, um, hit the subscribe button. Everybody else hit the like button if you enjoy it. Um, and I hope to have you guys, you know, return to the channel. Um, I have a podcast, 60 Frames No Like Podcast. It airs every Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Got a great crew, great panel, and you never know who shows up, right? But anyway, hopefully you stick around. But now let's get to it, right? So we'll start off with, where should we start off with? Um, we'll talk about uh, Windows Central's interview with Matt Booty, um, talking about Xbox multiplayer strategy and more. Um so Matt Booty's been really pleased at the results of, at this point, Project Latitude, which is their project. Um, apparently, that's what it's called on games being ported to uh, PlayStation. And they've been really pleased, especially with how well Sea of Thieves doing. Apparently, not only has it been done well on PlayStation 5, it also, f I guess they're attributing Xbox and PC gamers coming back back so the rise of playstation 5 gamers and the extra um you know activity that the playstation uh, platform is bringing had people on the xbox and pc side joining because they seen all this activity and to join in and stuff like that so they're really pleased with their decision of putting games on playstation now this right here is just another thing that you're just gonna have to people just gonna have to um understand this is a quote from, Max, from Matt Booty. When asked about what this means for future Xbox exclusive, excuse me, Booty reiterates that the teams are evaluating games hitting other consoles on a case-by-case -case basis, adding that Xbox players can absolutely continue to expect many games to launch as exclusives and that the Xbox promise that all Xbox first party games come to Xbox Game Pass will continue to be true. So you're going to get your games on Game Pass. That's never going to change. So we could we could end that. And I think that's always they, they have to commit to that. Right. But I think there was a little concern, especially with Call of Duty money and stuff like that. But you guaranteed commitment to Game Pass, their first party day one. You go with that. But now with the month with the the plan on putting games on other platforms you are only guaranteed launch you know games to launch as exclusive so now microsoft has used this term multiple times you know console launch exclusives what that means is is pretty much you'll get the game definitely at a minimum on xbox before you know playstation and nintendo it's a it's a launch exclusive right but after that after that launch you know, it's a case by case basis. Now, what do they mean by case by case basis? It's simple. And I said this on um, this channel, I said this on my podcast, right? There is no case by case basis on well, would this game work or whatever game work? They're not doing that. They're not they're not judging the games or if it's ten tempo exclusive. It's not that deep. All right. The case by case basis is resources. And I said this multiple times. A lot of the studios within Xbox do not have the capability to do like day and date, or it's gonna take a while to port a multiplayer, or they may just not have the resources to port their games at all. And somebody else has to port it for them, you know, maybe like Obsidian or something like that, right? Smaller studios and stuff, right? It's gonna take resources. People think porting games is free. I don't understand this community. Like, eh, just put it on every platform like it's that easy. No, it costs money. You need equipment, you need more equipment, more equipment than you originally have, right? You need more people to put these games on other platforms. It's just not like the same crew you had that specifically designed just for the console or the console NPC doesn't automatically, oh, now they have the ability to just do it all on every platform. It doesn't work that way, right? Xbox do have studios that can do multiplats, primarily the ones they purchased, like Bethesda. They can do multiplats day one. Like, for example, Doom is coming day one on PlayStation. Why? Because that developer was used to, built, and already done um, day one multiplats on all platforms. That's who they were. Same thing with Bethesda. They have no issues with that. So they already have the capability to do it in-house. Um, Activision Blizzard King, ABK. 
same thing. They had they were a multi plat dev that put games on all platforms. They have that capability, right? But other studios like Coalition and Three Four Three and stuff, they weren't built to put games on PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, and PC. You know, um, the only investment that they got was to put games on PC day one. So they grew in that respect, right? So they and plus it's all Microsoft tools, right? Direct as tools, so it's probably a little bit easier. But trying to put it on a totally different platform with its own, you know, framework and stuff very challenging right and it's not and i don't think microsoft's gonna invest in those studios to you know port games day one and stuff like that not with those studios that's just too much investment right so it's gonna take a while for games to be ported from these studios and stuff like that right but with that said the primary obviously the goal is obviously to get the games on game pass right and all game pass supported platforms which includes a console and pc so you're gonna get those titles day one on game pass and the platforms that support it and then, you know, with resources and time, they'll eventually go on other platforms, right? So that's it, man. So I, I don't know how many more ways Microsoft can tell the Xbox community that they're pretty much going to support all platforms. And obviously, um, how the games goes on PlayStation and Nintendo, it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis in terms of resources, right? For example, the game may not be able to fit on Switch, right? You know, let's say like a game like Doom, right? Can't, but it might fit on Switch too and stuff. So th those are the challenge of goals, right? Ultimately, Xbox games are going everywhere, right? And I mean everywhere, everywhere. To include PlayStation, to include Nintendo, PlayStation 6, PlayStation 7, PlayStation 8, Switch 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and whatever platforms out there. So we just need to move on from that, right? Now let's go on to another topic. So this right here, Black Myth Wukong. This has begun. This has really chapped um, the Xbox community's ass. And what's hilarious is it's not like you guys was gonna buy it anyway. I don't know why you guys are all salty. Well, I know why. We'll, we'll talk about it. But you weren't really gonna buy this game. You guys are not about that life. If anything, most of y'all would have wanted this game on Game Pass. So I don't even know why y'all playing. You know, stop playing. Stop playing with this nonsense, right? But anyway, so Black Myth Wukong over here. Let me let me show you. Yeah, right there boom we'll do that right there um bit of conundrum right so originally this game was announced that's gonna be all platforms whatever but during the summer games fest around that time frame it was announced that the xbox series version will be delayed and the reason by the developer um if we could get this out here let me show you the screenshot was this on which platforms can i play black Myth wukong PC and PS5 users can enjoy the full game starting August 20th, 2024. We are currently optimizing the Xbox Series XS version to meet our quality standards, so it won't release simultaneously with the other platforms. We apologize for the delay and aim to minimize the wait for Xbox users. We will announce the release date as soon as it meets our quality standards. So we heard this story before, and we've seen this. We've seen this with Baldur's Gate you know, 3 and all that stuff, right? Pretty simple. Xbox Series X tries again. And it's so obvious. It's a very weak console. The specs, I mean, the only spec it has that keeps up with the other platforms is just the CPU. Everything else falls short, right? But no, that that you can't that can't be it, right? Even though, again, this is a statement again. Um, Windows Central's had an interview with Microsoft, um, and Jazz asked Microsoft's point of view on this, and this was their quote. We're excited for the launch of Black Myth Wukong and Xbox Series XS and are working with Game Science to bring the game to our platform. We can't comment on the deals made by our partners with other platform holders, but we remain focused on making Xbox the best platform for gamers and great games are at the center of that. So now, because of that, of course, the Xbox community ran with it, right? They ran with it. And now they're all advocating saying that this was a third party deal. Slimy business practice. Microsoft on why Black Myth Wukong won't be hitting Series X consoles at launch. So, apparently now the damage control from the Xbox community that is not the Series S, that is not optimization, because uh, God forbid, we never heard that before, right? We never heard games needing to be optimized for Series S. It's marketing. So, here's the thing. If this game was marketed by PlayStation, it is absolutely the worst marketing deal ever, right? Because you don't see Sony advertising the game on like, you know, every other game that they marketed. There's no special thing attached to it, like no custom controller, no special mission, like nothing. Like if this is a marketing deal, it is absolutely their worst marketing deal that they have done because every every other marketing deal, you're going to get something, whether it's, you know, again, marketing, actual seeing videos and stuff like that, 
a custom bundle or some type of special mission pack, something. There's always going to be something additive. This is like the quietest marketing deal I've ever seen from Sony, right? So this leads me to believe that it's not a marketing deal at all. This is straight Xbox Series S, right? Because the main thing is Sony doesn't hide marketing deals. They never did. You clearly know a marketing deal when you see one when it comes to um, PlayStation stuff, right? This is just another case of people damage controlling the Xbox Series S, which is, I don't understand why. Like the Xbox Series S is not in a Xbox gamer's best interest, unless you don't care about graphics and you just want like a $200, $250 console just to play games. You don't care about nothing. But if you're an Xbox Series X owner, you are getting screwed over. You are absolutely getting screwed over, over and over and over and absolutely over it's just absolutely sad right it's, it just blows my mind how how this this is just being ignored but i'm not surprised at this point it's 2024 we're four years deep into the gen xbox gamers are going to damage control xbox series X, even though it's blatantly obvious but the thing that's crazy the most this the xbox community had the nerve the audacity to even be slightly concerned of PS5 performance. You remember that 2020, they're talking about, you know, 9.2, not full RDNA, not have all the features gonna hold back next gen. The audacity of this community to even spend one minute worrying about PlayStation 5 when the real fuck up of this whole entire gen was literally the Xbox Series S platform. Absolutely the, one of the worst decisions of, of how to build a console. In fact, I think the Xbox Series S is absolutely worse than the PlayStation 3, in my opinion. Absolutely worse. Absolutely worse. Because as bad as the PlayStation 3 launched at $600, it eventually showed its true potential and stuff like that. It took a while. It took a long while. But you started seeing some incredible, incredible graphically demanding games. It just looked gorgeous. Like especially from the PlayStation first party studio, you saw what the PlayStation 3, it just wasn't a good console for the multi-plats in terms of third party. But there was a few third party that, that did take advantage. For example, Rockstar with Gran Turismo, not Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Auto 4, the best version was on Xbox 360. You know, because 360 was a more easier, uh, developer friendly platform. But fast forward to Gran Turismo, um, keep saying Gran Turismo, Gran Theft Auto 5, that was the best version, right? So obviously, you know, Rockstar was one of the developers that really dug in and actually say, yo, we got, you know, we could really take advantage of this. But it wasn't a developer friendly platform. So overall, it was a bad idea. But it wasn't Xbox Series S bad. Xbox Series S, you're never going to get anything out of that thing. That thing is just going to be a pain in the ass deeper and deeper into the gen and stuff. So how did we get to this place? How did they get into optimization issues? Like, how, what, what, how, how did you know the developers of Black Myth Wukong really get into this? So this is my opinion. My opinion is this. They started the build based off of PC, right? So that's where I think this whole thing. I think PC is the base you know, platform on this, right? And with that being a base platform, they decided to pick a minimum spec. So they went with PC and they said, hey, this is the minimum spec that we need on PC. This is what we're gonna go with. And this is how we'll build our game. Obviously, when you're at a higher spec at PC, the bells and whistles, the game looks better. Now, because of the minimum spec is on PC and they set the standard, PlayStation 5 will have no problem playing that game. Xbox Series X will have no problem playing that game. But then the Series S is probably what they know is, wait a minute, we messed up because the minimum spec that we chose for PC is a little bit higher than the Series S, meaning the Series S is lower than the minimum spec for the PC. And I think that's where, what they should have done was looked at the Xbox Series S, see what that spec is, and then based off the equivalent PC minimum spec, go off that, but they didn't. I think the minimum spec they chose on PC is a little bit performing or something's there. A lot of people are talking about it's the memory, that the memory, the minimum spec of memory is higher than what's available for the Series S. Series S only has 10 gigs total from what I was told, right? And they have to split that too. So it's a it's a pretty, you know, bare bone as compared to the Series X and, it's and the PlayStation 5, which is 16 gigs, much more memory and stuff like that. So. That's, I think, where the problem is at. They picked the minimum spec that the Series S doesn't have, and now they're just trying to figure out what do we have to cut, you know? Now, since this is, uh, uh, you know, 
this is not like one of the bigger studios that already have a name established. They want to make sure all versions have a level of quality because their names associated. You know, if this game is dog shit on the Series S, they're going to look bad. It doesn't matter how the PS5 Series X or the PC version looks. A lot of people are going to use the Series S version and slam them and stuff. And they're probably trying to prevent that. And I think that's what's ultimately happening. The last topic I want to talk with you guys is this. And this is this. This is going to start a bad trend. And you know, Zuby Tech, he's doing, he's doing the Lord's work and stuff like that, right? But this is going to be a problem, right? A couple of months ago, over a year ago, there was a warning, you know, People talking the background, you know, journalists were saying, you know, at the game developer conference and stuff like that, they're talking with developers, you know, saying that, hey, you know, making games on Xbox is just not worth it unless you're going to put the game on Game Pass or get a Game Pass deal. You're not going to find much success if you're a double A or indie developer. The big triple A's, like the well-known big titles, you'll be fine. You know, like the Assassin's Creed, you know, stuff like that. Obviously, Grand Theft Auto, you know, something from EA, Ubisoft, you know, um, you know, The Division, Rainbow Six Siege, even though we haven't seen a Rainbow Six Siege game in a while, right? Or Rainbow Six game in general. But, you know, you know, uh, Ghost, you know, you know, Tom Clancy's. Um, what's it called? The ghost guys and stuff like that. So, you know, all the big games, you know, that, that, that you don't normally get, right? Those, those will be fine. Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, they'll all be fine. Resident Evil, they'll all be fine, right? Because those are really big names. But the double A and single A and indie come-ups, right? Titles that may start small and then grow into something big. Um, they're skipping the Xbox, right? Unless they have a Game Pass deal, they're not coming to Xbox. Because Xbox nurtured a culture where the gamers rely on Game Pass. You know, that's where they want to play the games. It's great value. They don't really need to buy games no more unless it's the big ones. Well, now the list now, now this is trending. Zuby Tech is doing it, but I've seen it with other accounts. They are now constantly listing and updating this list of games that's not on Xbox, meaning Xbox excluded, right? Um, Xbox skip, that's like the new term, you know, the new Xbox skip. And that list is just instantly like, look how big, like, look at this list. The list is funny. Hello Kitty on an adventure. Holy cow. I remember that was a thing. But little by little, the list is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And again, these are smaller titles, you know, double A's, single A's, indies and stuff like that, right? But just like anything else, you know, if you if you want a, a platform, you have to, you know, you have to be able to provide double A's, single A's and indies, right? For that audience. There's going to be audiences that, you know, may want some of these games and stuff like that, right? And as this list gets bigger and bigger and bigger, I mean, we're in 2024. You're talking about potentially four more years at least, right? How many more games are, how big would this list get? of just games that are excluded and no longer on Xbox. Are you talking a thousand games? You know, 500 to a thousand? It'd be absolutely insane, you know, if so much content and so many games just keep getting excluded. And then if some of those double A or single A or indie becomes like a big noticeable hit, kind of like Hades, right? Hades was an indie game, but it was like a huge hit and stuff, right? You don't want to see that, you know, a huge hit double A game or a huge hit single A game or just a big blockbuster indie game that just was one of those breakouts right and it's not on xbox and everywhere else that will get noticed so this <laughs> this is this is this right here you know games that are only on these platforms right and not on xbox that's a bad look you know more and more people will notice and especially if the games that are skipped on xbox and not there they become big hits that everybody wants to play and people notice it's not on xbox that just gets worse really makes it a bad identity but anyway, yay, you guys let me know what you think on a topic. I'm going to end it off right here. I just want to say to all of you, appreciate you guys, you know, rocking out with the channel. Appreciate the support. Appreciate all the people that, you know, uh, bother to subscribe, become members, you know, check out the podcast and stuff. And I hope you, and if you're new here, I hope you did enjoy this informative um, video and check out some of my other videos and podcasts just to check it out, stoop around. But I hope you stick around. Again, subscribe, like, check it out. Tuesday, 60 Frames No Like Podcast, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But, you know, until then, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. You guys take care. Let's go play some video games, right? It sounds like a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. You guys take care. Peace. Grand opening, grand closing.